Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. And you're probably thinking, why are you singing that stupid song? <laughs> well, today I want to talk about two kinds of people who are present in your life, in my life. And to be honest, they rule the world. The world is only the way it is because of these two kinds of people. The two distinct people. And right through the middle of this video, you're going to be very angry at me. Which is okay. Join the line, join the club. I got lots of them. But if you wait until the end of the video, you're going to thank me. Like your mom used to tell you, you're going to thank me when you grow up. You're going to thank me later. All right. So watch all the way to the end. I hope you enjoy it. It's going to be good. Let's go. So it's a good day. In life, there are two kinds of people. There are the rowers and the rockers. They are present at work, school, family, everywhere. Rowers and rockers. They are very distinct, very different. Two extremes of the pendulum. So I wanna to talk to you about them, how I see them. The rowers are the kind of people who are reliable, really trustworthy. They are steady, they are stable. They conform to the status quo. They've been told do this and you can trust them that they will do that. They are the kind of people who are employed to do what we think needs to be done that way. There won't be any questions. They'll just do what they're told to do. Those are the rowers. Back in the days when you had these uh, big ships that would navigate here and there, you'd had slaves who would row the boat. And that's where you know, songs like this come and I, I love singing on a, on a low pitch. Like, row, row, row your boat. Sounds like a Viking, doesn't it? The rowers enjoy things like tradition. They like sentences like tested and tried. Like that, that's boring. Nothing that I do is tested and tried. I'm, I'm always trying different things, but the rowers are not like that. You know, there's a, there's a legend or history lesson that says that John D. Rockefeller, in the beginning of his empire, he needed people to work for his industries and factories because he was running out of people. So he came to the government and proposed that they would build, build these facilities where they would train people to go and work for the Rockefellers. We call them schools today. Does that resonate with you? Do you know where this is going? Did you know that John Rockefeller actually funded public schools? to train workers for his factories. Now, if that doesn't give you goosebumps, I don't know what does. You know, there's a big discussion about Montessori education and traditional education. Did you know that less than 0.5% of the leaders in our world were educated with Montessori education where different ages and different levels are together playing, striving and challenging each other? And 99.5% of the population actually went through the traditional way of schooling over the last 150 years. Did you know that? Now, there is a reason why 1% of the population controls 80% of the money. And all of these guys, I can guarantee you, they either went through a Montessori education or they dropped out of school and paid for their kids to be educated that way. Now, think about that for a moment as we move on to talk about the other class. When I say these things, people think that I'm mad at the rowers. I'm not mad at the rowers. We, we need the rowers. Imagine if everyone in the world were like the rockers. Everyone's trying to do a new thing. Nothing's going to work. So we need the rowers. And I promise you, towards the end of this video, that's why I said in the middle, you're going to get angry. But in the end, you're going to thank me. I want to give you some advices, some tools, and specifically on our Patreon, I want to give you some, some tools to recognize when and where to use different mentalities, different mindsets. But before we go there, let's continue with this thinking. I'm enjoying this. The other category of people are the rockers. You know, on the boat, there are the people who row the, bo row the boat, and there are the people who rock the boat. Have you ever had your boat rocked by someone? Maybe someone you fall in love with, and you know, you're about to get married, she rocked your boat. Maybe it's someone who taught you something so different that you go like, I've been doing this wrong for my whole life. And not to blow my own trumpet, but that happens to me quite often when people come to me and say, I never knew that. You just showed me something new. That's not because I'm smarter than them. It's just because I keep reading stuff and then I just try to share it. But that's the people who rock our boats. They are innovative. They come up with new things. They, all, they, they love inventing new ways of solving old problems. Like the problem is solved, why would you change it? Oh, it's just for fun. <laughs> we just want to do it for fun. They, 
they are annoying. That's the word. They are annoying. I know because I'm annoying. People, people around me be like, you're so annoying. Why? They're like, shut up. This, these are the rockers. They rock our boats. They, they challenge us. They challenge the status quo. Like I said, they're innovative. I like to say they disturb to disrupt. There's no way you're going to disrupt an industry, a market, or, or a flow of anything natural if you don't disturb them. Literally, it's annoying. You have to keep knocking until people go like, you know what? You're right. Now, if I can give you any example, biblical example, because I'm familiar with the Bible, it's, it's like that uh, widow that was just begging the, just, uh, the, the justice for, for a just uh, judgment. She's just like, no, I want this, I want this. And the judge goes like, you know what? She's been, she's been yelling at me. She's annoying. Give it to her. That is someone who disturbs to disrupt. Now, you're probably thinking, oh, you know, these people are the, the, the icons of society, the idols. To be honest, you don't need to invent anything in order to become a rocker or in order to be a rocker. Uh, that's a personality thing. That's your identity. You just got to be you. If you're authentic, I can guarantee you, if you're authentic and if you be you, you you're probably going to disrupt something because society is trying to tell you, you have to be this way. You have to be that way. You have to behave in a certain manner. And then you go like, you know what? No, no, I don't like it. I'll give you an example. When my first daughter was younger, we used to send her to um, kindy, kindergarten, for those of you who are in America. And uh, America, God bless America. <laughs> and then um, we used to send her to kindergarten. And she had this thing. She always wanted to wear different socks. Back in my days, there was this little um, TV series called Punky Baker. She, she literally was a little uh, punk girl who dressed so different, like yellow socks and pink socks on the other one. So my daughter had that. I, I, I don't know why. I don't know where it came from. But she's like, no, nah, I, I just, I, I like wearing different color socks. So I said, okay, you like wearing different color socks? You're creative. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to incentivize that. So I, I bought a bunch of socks and I used to put one foot yellow, one foot green, one foot yellow, one foot pink, and whatever, and send her to school. You know what I got? I got a letter from the school. And the teacher was asking me, why is your daughter wearing different socks? And I was called into the school. I had a whole speech prepared. I walked in, the, the, the principal, the director said, look, this is really funny, but like, we want to understand, why is she wearing different socks? You know what I said? Instead of the whole speech, I had an explanation. I could give her this video. My daughter's a rocker. She's, she's not innovative. But you know what I said? I said, why not? Why not? Because this is the, what's, who told you that you have to wear the same socks? Who told you that just because you bought it in a bundle, you have to wear the same thing? Like I, it, it's, it's, as far as I'm concerned, it's my foot. I, I can put whatever I want in it. If I want to put sandals, shoes, whatever, I, I'm good with it. And she's good with it, so why not? She didn't have an answer. My daughter wears different color socks for five years <laughs> until we moved and then she realized that she was a bit of out of context and then she changed. But she's still, she's still different. My daughter's different. And you know what? I'm proud of that. I'm proud that my people are different. I don't want to be the same. I want to be different. I was created different. I was, I, I'm unique. I'm a masterpiece. The creator who created me put all his effort into creating me the way I am. Why would I conform? No. I'm me. I wear my hat. I wear different clothes. I don't care. If you don't like it, it's your problem. Because I'm only responsible for what I do and what I say. How you get it, how you understand it, it's your prerogative. It's your problem. So I, I'm all for incentivizing that. But that's because I am a rocker. But you don't have to be an inventor. You don't have to be an Elon Musk. You can just be you. Talking about Elon Musk, um, a while ago he said something really interesting. He said this. Uh, he was on an interview and he said, I don't need to have a PhD from MIT or Harvard. I just hire the people who have those. That makes you think. That, make, like, that goes like, that, there's a difference between being intelligent and being smart. I like the smart part. And that's what he did. Now that you know the difference between the rowers and the rockers, I want to move forward and I want to give you some specific characteristics. I, I have a list of them, so I'm going to read through a list. And I hope you enjoy the list. But before we go there, I want to ask you to do three things. This is going to be a bit different. Normally, this is very quick. This is very subtle. But I want you to stop and I want to ask you to do three things, okay? Number one, I would love for you to subscribe to this channel. I know this is very basic. Everybody says that. But believe it or not, most people watch the videos don't subscribe to the channel. 
more than 70% of the people who watch my videos, they're not subscribers. So if you click the button, that'll help us be in touch and you'll be suggested some good content from now on instead of just watching whatever it is that you watch. Maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. But if you subscribe to the channel, that's a good favor. I'm asking you and I've learned that when you ask for a favor, you have to say please. So please subscribe to the channel. Second favor, I would love for you to leave a comment below. Just a simple question. What are you? Are you a rower or a rocker? Let me know what you are and why you think that is. Just a little comment. Why am I asking you that? Because when you comment there, I get a perception of what you're getting out of the message. So I can improve, I can do it better. I, the point of an artist is to create art that people appreciate. I hope you appreciate what I'm doing. So I would love, I would love your feedback. And that comes in the form of a content when it comes to YouTube. And last but not least, you know, three things I said, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment. And last but not least, there is a link in the description of this video that will take you to my website. The reason why I'm asking you to do this is because I'm about to launch a book. That's a big deal, you know, you launch a book, you write a book. People say you have to do three things in order to have a meaningful life. You have to plant a tree, have kids and write a book. Well, I've done them all. I feel like my life is pretty significant and I would love to share with you my book. It's a, it's a, it's a manual that I did. Here it is. It's a manual that I did to help people find purpose in life. I think it's a pretty significant thing and I would love to get this in your hands for free. I want to give you a digital copy of this. Not because I think it's just silly. I think this is really worth it. But it, I think if you get your hands in this, your life could change. And if your life will change, then you stick around and you learn more. So go on my website. It's right there. You can subscribe. The book will be launched at the end of 2024 and you get a digital copy right there for free. Man, there ain't no better deal than that. It's free. All right. All right, let's go back to the video. All right. So I'm going to get my iPad and I'm going to read a list of characteristics, okay? I know this is counterintuitive. I know you want interaction and all of that, but I just want to read because I, I took a long time writing this and this is really valuable. I tell people that when they come to my YouTube channel, I'm providing value. I'm not playing around. I'm not making videos just to retain audience. Like I, I really want to add value to your life. So there's a bunch of things that I wrote here. They're all, there's assessments, there are tests, there are books, there's reference. So I want to read that to you, okay? So I want to do qualities characteristics of the rowers and the rockers. And the reason why I'm doing this, this is important to explain. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want you to identify yourself as one of them. There is no middle ground. You're either a rocker or a rower, done. And I want you to identify yourself as one of them so we can move forward. And when I give you the tools on our Patreon community, you know what to use and when to use it. This is valuable. And I feel like this is a one-on-one -on -one consultancy. You should be paying me for this. But anyway, let's go. Characteristics of rowers. Number one, consistency, dedication, and stability. So rowers are very much the steadiness in the personality test called DISC. This is probably the most popular test that's been around. It's a personality test. Dominant, um, forgot what the I is, but you know, the S is for steadiness. So people who are rowers, they're really stable. They, they're not moved by anything. They just keep doing the same thing over and over again. Which, you, know, you know who are generally rowers? Pastors. Pastors are rowers. They just show up every single day to do the same thing. Care for people, pray for people, write sermons, preach the message, same thing. They don't invent it. There's no need to invent anything, right? Consistency, dedication, and stability. They keep things steady and reliable. They keep the ball rolling, they keep the world going, they keep the clock ticking, you know? That's, that's the rowers. Um, it ensures that everything works the way it's supposed to work. They're reliable. Um, another thing, there is a test. I love this test. I think everybody should do this test. Specifically, if you're watching this video and if you're early in your university degree or you're trying to decide what you're going to do as a career, I think you should look this up. This is a book. It's by a, go it's by a guy called Edgar Shane. Edgar Sheen, it's very old. It was written like in the 80s, very old. But there's a, I think it's on the fifth edition now. It's called Career Anchors. I've, I haven't read the whole thing, but I've skimmed through it. Career Anchors. And it's got a test, an assessment test. So the rowers are people who provide security in that test. So if you're thinking career, long-term, like tenure, like professors in universities, for example, it's very likely you're one of those. Um... I love to talk to people about their careers. So th I think this is a great tool. Uh, I think career has a lot to do with your purpose. Uh, after all, we do spend a third of our life working. 
So if you're gonna spend a third of your life working on anything, you might as well like it, you might as well enjoy it. Another characteristics, rowers are like a rock in a stormy sea. You know, when the, when the sea is going, you know, to and fro and all of that, that's, if you find that big rock that you can grab, that's the rowers, you can trust that. They're very cautious. This is what I don't like about the, the rowers. They are risk averse. They are risk averse. So when it, when, it talks, when it comes to freedom, for example, I love the idea of freedom. A long time ago, I wanted to be rich until I found out what a rich person is. And I was like, nah, I don't want that. Then I wanted to be free. I just wanted to be free to do what God calls me to do. It's way better than being rich. And um, risk averse people will have a very hard time getting rich, let alone getting free because they are enslaved by a routine called work life. They can't, they can't fathom the idea of quitting, resigning, because they say, no, 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 I've been told that I have to work for 35 years to retire. Retirement is a delusion. Sorry if that offends you, but it's an illusion. You're not gonna retire, forget about it. You, you, might, you, you probably wanna get into investment, potentially property, and I know it's really hard, but you have to be creative because you're gonna be left behind. That's, that's the truth. So uh, risk averse people, they like, um, you, you know the Enneagram? Have you ever heard of the Enneagram? Enneagram is a personality type test kind of thing. Uh, there are nine of them. And I, th I think it's one of the best ones. I think you should do it. Like with my, with my program my, that I have, my consultancy program that follows with the book, when, I, when I'm trying to teach people how to find their purpose and all of that, there's a bunch of things that I do, a bunch of assessments, including the Enneagram. It's crucial. Number six on the Enneagram is the kind of people that pisses me off. It's the rowers. That's, if that's you, <laughs> I, I doubt it because most of the people attracted to this channel, they're not there. They're the rockers. But anyway, uh, they prefer to stick to the trotting test. Like I said, they, they don't like pitfalls. They don't like gaps. They like things running smoothly. <laughs> boring. That's a boring <laughs> lifestyle. Anyway. That's, but that's them. But the good thing about it, it's like they, they work very well with cooperation. Uh, Simon Sinek talks a lot about cooperation. The second to last book he wrote, Leaders Eat Less, he talks about teamwork quite a lot. Um, using the military as, as an example, it's great. Like they, are co they cooperate quite a lot, which is something that I do really badly, really badly. I got to work on it. My wife um, has a saying, I, man, even saying that just, I, it annoys me. She says, teamwork makes the dream work. And you can, I, can almost, I, I can almost hear her in the morning. You got to help me with the dishes. <laughs> man, I hope she doesn't see this video. But there's a, she's always thinking about teamwork. And I'm thinking, no, man, you do your thing. I'll do my thing. And at the end, it will work. Because I'm a rocker. She's a rower. And that's why we got married. We, we're good together. If I had married another rocker, man, like our boat would be rocked so many times we'll be sinking. You know, when you play, when you play football, um, they talk about inches, every inch matter. The rockers, they think about touchdowns. The rowers, they think about yards. So take the first yard, take the second yard, take the 10th yard, go for another run or another down. But we rockers, we think about touchdowns, but you will never get you the touchdown line if you don't get the yards. So that's, we complement each other. Finally, here are a few things that I want to recommend. And I'm, I'm reading this because I think this is really good value to you. So this is a few things that I, um, I want to recommend to you. Number one, if you're in a work environment and you want to understand this, good book, The Five Dysfunctions of a Team. The Five Dysfunctions of a Team by a guy called Patrick Lencioni. We had a workshop yesterday, so this is really fresh in my mind, about the six working type genius. Six working type genius, which is the latest uh, work that they did at the table group, which is Patrick Lencioni's business. It's amazing how people work together, how we understand together, how we understand each other, how, we, how I can step into your shoes. So the five dysfunctions of a team and the six working genius types, this, this is insanely good. I think it's the latest and the greatest. You should try that. So if you're in a work environment. Second, uh, there's another book that I wrote and I keep recommending you books and you don't have to read the whole books. You can go, just go and check GPT and just get a summary of it. But type Give and Take by Adam Grant. Adam Grant is a psychologist who's been, you know, who's becoming famous more and more because he's serving organizations like Google and Meta and all of these guys with his ideas. He wrote a book, 
uh, about give and take. It's literally about understanding people where they're at, like understanding their personality. You, you need it. It's called empathy. You know, <laughs> you know who's the master of empathy? Jesus. He's the master of empathy. He would look at people and go like, you're totally wrong. You're messed up. You don't deserve this. But I understand where you're coming from. And I'm not being, I, I, I'm not signing off on your sin. But I'm inviting you to a life of change, a life of transformation. But I'll give you grace for that period. So that's empathy. So that's, that's beautiful. So read that. So the five dysfunctions of a team, it's good for the rowers. Understand the rockers. Because the, the organizations are probably led by a rocker and ran by the rowers. Isn't that funny? It's led by the rockers but ran by the rowers. So we need each other. I need you. You need me. Characteristics of the rockers. We're about to finish this, okay? Um, number one, innovation, which is, <laughs> it's not news, innovation. I remember, uh, every time I talk about innovation, I, I can't not think about Steve Jobs. And obviously we have better examples now. We have Elon Musk and the whole thing about going to Mars. That's very innovative. But, you know, like, think about this. 20 years ago, this did not exist. And this literally changed the way we behave as a society. I could say this is a phone. This is not a phone. This is an iPhone. Steve Jobs used to say, I have no competition. Nokia is not my competitor. Samsung is not my competitor. They make phones. We make iPhones. It's different. That's very innovative. And the reason why he did this, every single invention that Apple had when Steve Jobs was alive was a disruption, a market disruption. So I remember when they came up with the iPod, it's not an MP3 player. It's a thousand songs in your pocket. When they came up with the uh, MacBook Air, which is more recent, uh, it's the idea of pushing the envelope. So they pushed the computer out of an envelope. Um, the idea that you have the world in your hands, that you can make a, a video phone call and talk to anyone right here. This is innovation. This is, this is a new category. This is, again, another recommendation if you want to go deep into this. There is a difference between innovation and invention. Both start with I. But it's different. Read the book From Zero to One by Peter Thiel. From Zero to One by Peter Thiel. The best book about innovation that you will ever read. Ever. If you don't know who Peter Thiel is, and I, I don't know where you've been living anyway. So just look it up. Get the book. You will love it if this is your type of thing. So first characteristics of rockers. Innovation. Heroic innovation. They go against the tide and they do not care. They are ready to pay the price. Those are the rockers. Characteristic number two, they are fearless. They're fearless. It's like they, they you look at them and they're like, I ain't scared of nobody. You remember that scene on the Coach Carter when the boy says, I ain't scared of nobody. And uh, they are literally fearless. I, I set aside an example here about um, Richard Branson. Because we're in Australia, I hate to say Richard Branson. Not because he's in Australia, he's British anyway, but Virgin is pretty big here. Virgin Australia, the, the flight, by the way, Virgin Australia is not even a business anymore. It's the, the, the flight business is gone. That's how he started it. But Virgin Galactica, which is his attempt to, you know, go to the moon as a tourist. And there's, a, <laughs> there's so many people doing this. There's obviously um, SpaceX with Elon Musk, but they are, they, they're trying something different. There is uh, Blue by Jeff Bezos. I think it's called Blue or Blue Origins or something. And then Virgin Galactica. And, and I'm sure there's less you know, uh, or smaller businesses trying the same thing. But the goal is to get uh, touristic packages to the moon and back. When they did it, they had a lot of criticism, but I I'm pretty sure they've, they've been able to make it a, a commercial fair for people who just want to go fly to the fly me to the moon. You know, <laughs> it's all there, man. It's all there in the industry. So that's pretty heroic. You imagine the amount of pressure someone has to go Especially when we, here's some questions for you. If we've been to the moon, why have we never gone back? What, what, what's up with that? So to go to a place where we've never been for the last 50 years, it's pretty insane. So that's very heroic for me. So first of all, innovation. Second, a fearless, uh, they're very fearless. They're like almost, almost like heroes. They don't fear anything. And last but not least, they are adaptable in their leadership. And for the last example, I want to mention Elon Musk. To be honest, I don't like Elon Musk. I personally, it's a, I don't know him personally, but the way he, the way he talks and look, I, 
There's something about the guy that I'll go like, Ugh. Ugh. Brother, Ugh. I don't know. I, I, I'm not a big fan of Elon Musk. Um, I don't think Tesla is the solution for the fuel problem because it takes more fuel to produce the batteries than it takes to fuel all the cars in the world anyway. So that's a different thing. And no one knows where we're going to throw the batteries when they, when they expire. Have you ever thought about that? Do you own a Tesla? Where are you going to throw the batteries? Five to ten years, the batteries are gone. Where are you going to throw them? They, they're not disposable. So they're nuclear. Anyway, uh, different conversation. I'm not a big fan of the guy. But no one can deny that he's a disruptor. There's Tesla. Uh, there's so many other things that he did. But I like the example of SpaceX. If you don't know that, you know the Peter Thiel guy that I just mentioned? Elon Musk is a co-founder with Peter Thiel on PayPal. The gateway that you use to pay anything on the internet, they did it together. So these guys are clever, very clever. But SpaceX, like taking someone to Mars, we are talking the Jetsons here, people. We're, we're talking a whole nother level. We're not talking about traveling countries or continents. 500 years ago, Columbus was traveling on a ship somewhere else by accident landed in America. People called them crazy and the, a whole new civilization started. Imagine what it's going to be like when we travel planets. And Elon Musk has been public saying we want to be a civilization that is interplanetary. You know, we're talking Star Trek and all that crazy stuff right here, right now. We don't, we're not talking about the future. He says that in 10 years we'll be able to do that. Oof. He had a funny thing. I'm, I'm not sure about the accuracy of this thing, but he was in an interview I heard, and people asked him, "How are you like? Don't you think you're traveling in the wrong direction? You're going to Mars, like that's closer to the sun. It's too hot. Like shouldn't we go in the other way? Because <laughs> that's that's gonna." And, and he said, "Like, oh, there's a very tangible, feasible way for us to live in Mars." And the the reporter was like, "Tell me." It's like, "Well, we just gotta bomb some nukes there, and it's gonna get cold." It's like. Who thinks about that? You gotta think outside the box. Again, you have to adapt your leadership style and be very innovative to think that if I, if I explode a few nuclear ogives right there, it will get cold. That's like insane. Anyway, that's an example I could think of. So, I said all of that. I'm gonna conclude this video with this. This, this is my conclusion. We started with the rockers and the rowers, different characteristics. I gave you a few assessments, a few books. So I wanna ask you, what kind of people are you? Are you a rocker or are you a rower? You have to make a decision. You have to figure it out. Do the assessments, do the Enneagram, take the work assessment, take the six type working genius, take, the, take all of that and figure it out. Why? Because if you know who you are, you will know how to think and what you do. That's, that's the main thing of this video. If you know who you are, and this, this is not supposed to be an empty vague thing. If you know who you are, like, oh, nah, you know what? I'm, I'm a rower. I like my career. That's fine. You don't, want it, you don't need to change. But if you're a rocker, you will be frustrated as hell if you're doing a career on something that you don't enjoy. So find out who you are. That's my contribution to you today. Who the heck are you? Put it in the comments, and that's gonna be your participation. Now, if you wanna go deeper, what I'm gonna do is on my Patreon community, which is part of that proposal that I did early on, I'm gonna go through very intentional and intense information about these two people. Mindsets, how to operate, that kind of stuff. And um, I don't claim to be an expert, I'm just reproducing the things that I've read and, and expanding it to you. It's almost like a, I'm giving you the food ready to be swallowed. So if you wanna go there, you just gotta go on patreon.com slash Pedro on purpose, patreon.com slash Pedro on purpose, and you can choose how you join us there. It's a community, it's not just an audience, it's very interesting and I hope you enjoy it when you get there. But if you're not ready to commit to that, that's fine. There's another video over here that I would love for you to watch that will help you open your mind and maybe ease your way into our journey together. Hope you've enjoyed it. Have a great day. God bless you. So it's a good day.